Hello and welcome back to the Computer Networks Optimization Project. In this video, I'm going to be going over my preliminary results too. So in the previous video, um, we were able, to, or I was able to have a working fitness function, tested that, made sure it worked. Um, I was able to generate a random population of chromosomes, um, so essentially initial population. And then I was also able to find the um, the maximum, you know, the max value. And I had a chromosome class that kind of stored um, everything in terms of the attributes of the chromosome itself. So the genes, index pairs, and now I even have the fitness itself um, is now with the actual chromosome itself. So the, the data structure really is um, the population is gonna be a list and it's going to be a list of chromosomes. So um, that's the way I thought was most intuitive. So that's what we rolled with. Um, let's go over some of the new things. Um, this is pretty much a uh, completed genetic algorithm, except for um, I have not actually tested it on multiple generations. But essentially, the idea here is that for this particular video, I want to kind of start with the same uh, network we've been working with since the since the structure video because we you know we hand calculated some of those values and it's it's kind of easy to go in and verify um, what we find and i want to walk through an entire you know starting with the first generation and then getting the first um the next generation right um obviously for the final presentation you know we'll uh we'll we'll run the generations like 500 times um, do some optimization there, um, produce a graph that shows like, you know, when, it, when, it, when does it converge and those kinds of things. Um, but for now, you know, for the preliminary results too, we want to show that we've got all the working pieces. So like the fitness, the mutations, um, selection, crossovers, um, all of that. So that's what this, um, this little test script here is going to do. And I called it, I'll call this my milestone too. Um, I've had to kind of uh, tone back some of my expectations uh, for the project because um, just time constraints and, um, you know, um, the computer networks part of it has just haven't had that much time to really dive deep into that. So if I really had to describe my project now, um, it's more or less about um, finding, um, finding the shortest path in a sort of like a, a graph representation of connections. So whether that's, you know, you can extrapolate that to uh, maybe you know uh, streets. Um, so if you're like driving a car and you're trying to figure out where the where where, where the best route is, so to speak. Um, obviously, this is applicable to computer networks. However, I have not had much of a chance to incorporate some of the computer network uh, specific um, criteria and constraints. So really, this genetic algorithm now is more about okay. Um, I want to, I have a graph representation and I have an adjacency matrix to uh, represent the connections and I want to find, um, I want to find a sort of a ranked list of routes that, um, you know, going from greatest to least and want to know what are the best routes to take. Um, if I have a starting point and an end point in this particular graph of connections and so that's really the general sense of what this project has become. Um, I still think of when I'm when I'm working with it, I'm still kind of thinking of computer networks. Really, that's kind of still the basis. But um, I would say, you know, because we're at, we're here towards the end of the semester now, and um, uh, I would say that in my in my paper, I'll probably talk about you know the things that I think this is applicable to for computer networks because that's kind of been my focus when I was looking at research. Um, however, practically speaking and in, in, in my implementation of the project, it's really more about just finding the, uh, the shortest path inside of a graph representation. So with that being said, um, let's, let's talk about, uh, let's talk about the crossovers, um, the mutation and the selection. And I'll talk about some of the changes, um, as we go forward, um, the chromosomes kind of similar to the prelim preliminary results one population is largely unchanged. Um, very, very similar. Same thing with fitness. So really the, the three components that we needed from the last one was we needed the crossovers, we needed the mutations and we needed the selection 
and then uh, from there we need to run be able to run the um, be able to run it over and over again until you know for X amount of generations so we'll start with selection because we're going to go in order of how um, the genetic algorithm actually works so you generate a um, initial population then you do a selection and so I've selected roulette wheel um, I thought about doing tournament selection. Um, also, really, I really wanted to do stochastic universal sampling. Tried doing it. It, it was really just a bit too uh, complex for me because um, I kind of just ran out of time to really tease out whether or not I, I was doing it correctly. And there was um, more roulette wheel examples that I could say, okay, yeah, I think I think mine's working correctly. So that's what I rolled with. Um, one of the shortcomings is that um, roulette wheel can um, it can end up at it can um, converge too quickly, so to speak, and so um, you'll lose genetic diversity really, really quickly. So I have some ways to kind of combat that in a way, um, particularly my mutations. Um, an interesting thing here is when I'm actually selecting, um, I have to check whether or not, um, a particular, uh, chromosome has a length greater than two, because if it's two, it means that that is a, just a direct route and there shouldn't be any other, um, this actually saves, it produces my search space some, but the idea is that. Um, the only the only route that should exist that is of length two is a direct route between the start node and the end node, and all other randomly generated chromosomes will have to be of at least length three. And so, um, essentially, when we look at uh, you know the test script we're going to run, we're going to test the direct route first. And if it's greater, if it has a fitness value greater than zero, there's no point of even running the algorithm. It's like just go ahead and do that route. Um, from a computer network standpoint, that probably doesn't necessarily work. Um, but, uh, unfortunately I, I won't really have time to go in and, you know, dive deep dive on that. Um, right now, this is kind of just a good, uh, as a concept, you know, if it's direct route is, um, if the direct route's available, just, you know, don't even, don't even bother running the rest of the algorithm basically. Um, but I already know for a fact that in this particular um, in this particular network, um, we know that the um, we know that the value is zero. So selection, um, we essentially do a roulette wheel, and then we have to rank um, in order from greatest to least. Um, I had to do a bubble sort because the built-in Python sorting functions um, weren't going to work with my data structures, so I had to do that, have some tests there. Um, yeah, so let's move on to the crossover, because selection is pretty straightforward. You have a roulette wheel, and for crossovers, um, I actually needed two types of crossovers, um, because one of the, uh, I guess, unique things about my project is I tried to tackle um, variable length chromosomes. So for example, I can have a chromosome, say chromosome one, right? And it would have its, its genes or its route would be, you know, node zero to say three to six. But I can also have a chromosome that is say, Starts at zero, one, two, five, six, right? Uh, these are different lengths. And so um, I can't just have the same operation work because it, it, it just, it, it, it won't work. So I have two different types of, um, two different types of crossovers. So for the single point, I always know that um, whenever I have a route that's length three, um, I can't do a crossover on a route of length two. So that is kind of a limitation, but you know, but for the most part, they're going to be three. And I always know to go to the first index and I'll draw my lines here and then we'll swap them. And then what'll happen is that both of these will go through a quote unquote duplicates check. 
Um, for the for the for the one that's length three, obviously there won't be any duplicates. Um, but for the one that's of, of anything greater than three, there could be a duplicate, right? So there could be a three here. So this could have been one, three, five, and there would have been a duplicate. Um, but those get swapped and then it'll go through the rest of the, um, it'll, it'll go through the rest of the, of the chromosome and figure out if there's any duplicates. If there is a duplicate, here I'll actually change this to three. So if there is a duplicate, right, this will get swapped and then the three here will get deleted and then it'll now be three, five, six, and one, zero, one, six, right? So the problem here, it's not necessarily a problem. Um, and actually it can be helpful, right? Because we do want the shortest, we want the shortest route possible. So this is actually helpful in some ways, but the problem there is that what if, what if the, um, what if the route that's best is actually a little bit longer, right? So we need, we need to have a way of um, adding back genetic material and we do that in the, in the mutations. But um, for the crossovers, we can actually lose genetic material. And um, for the multipoint, right? So say we have now, um, say zero, one, say five, two, four, six. And we'll leave this one the same. So what'll happen here is that now we'll um, now we'll slice here and here, and then we'll swap them, and then it'll go through and it'll check both for duplicates. In this case, um, there won't be any duplicates because the five and a five are swapped, and there's nothing happening there. So, um, so that's kind of interesting that I actually needed to use. I have to I have to selectively choose between single point and multi point throughout um, throughout the generations. Anytime that you know I'm taking two parents, I have got to determine um, if I need to use single point and multi point. So that's a little interesting. Um, now mutations. Uh, this is also something I feel like is a little bit um, kind of unique for me. Um, I don't know how much I've seen in my research of this. Um, I'm sure I'm sure it probably exists, but um, at least through a lot of tutorials and things like that, um, I, I didn't quite see a whole lot of this. But um, so I'm adding genetic material here. So as we saw in the in the crossovers, I can lose a route when there's uh, two duplicated um, genes. And for the mutations, right? Um, I can actually add genetic material. So uh, the mutations themselves are. Um, they're, they're, they're swap mutations. Um, there are two types of swap mutations. One of them takes like the whole set. So for example, if we had, uh, say zero, two, three, five, six, right? Um, it'll take these three, it'll shuffle them and put it back in. Um, which is completely different than say, you just pick two random, say that you pick two spots. So you could pick two and three or here and here and then you just swap them. Um, that's what happens for, um, well, that actually doesn't happen. Um, for the time that there's a route of link three, so say we have um, zero, one, six. What'll happen here is um, the one it will, what it'll do is it will, um, it'll, it'll just choose a number between, um, it'll choose a random integer and it'll check to make sure that it didn't choose a number either zero, one or six. It has to choose something other than that. Um, generally speaking, it's, it's just any, any index that isn't what's already in here, essentially. Um, it's basically verifies or ensures that there's no duplicates. Um, so this will get changed to say like it could get changed to a four, it could get changed to a three or a two or a five, but it can't be, um, can't be zero six. Um, that's what this one here does. Now this, there's also, both of them have a probability of having genetic material added. And so the way that works is it just checks, um, it checks a, a probability and it, or it'll generate a random probability. And if it's, um, if it's less than 30%, uh, then um, we'll go in and we'll add genetic material. Uh, 
we also have to make sure that the route length is less than the number of nodes. So for example, if we had one that was say, you know, one, two, or zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, that's like technically the longest possible route for our particular network. Um, in this particular case, genetic material cannot be added because then, you know, there's not, a, there's not enough nodes. Um, and so that, that kind of ensures that. And then with the case of the threes, um, we know that there is no shuffling. We just have to kind of flip in a, in a way, um, that, that middle, that middle node. So, um, in summary, really what we have here is that in the crossovers, we're using single point and multipoint. Um, we're deleting the duplicate genes, so we lose genetic material. And in the mutations, um, we're doing um, a swap mutation. And, um, and we also are able to add back genetic material. Um, so that kind of helps with the um, loss of diversity, particularly using a roulette wheel. So um, with that being said, uh, let's jump into it, show you the results. Um, and I need to delete this. Run here. So real quick, we've got the network. Um, the network is going to, you know, we, we, we have this object here, so we don't have to constantly type in, you know, the number zero, whatever. We just type in the net. We change it here. It gets changed everywhere, right? Um, and for now, I don't have any other test networks that I can do, so I only have this particular test network. So that's what we're gonna roll with. Um, we're gonna change the uh, populations and see how that affects, um, you know, how that affects it. And um, essentially, we're going to create a initial population. We're going to, um, we're then going to score it and then we're going to se select the parents for the next generation. And then we're going to, and we have an elite size of three here. So what that means is that we're going to take the best three and automatically pass those on to the next generation. So um, in this particular example, three out of 10 is kind of, probably just need to change that to one for now. It kind of might help with genetic diversity a little bit. Um, and uh, so then we're gonna cross over after we've selected. So we'll cross over, we'll score it again to show what happens. And then we'll, um, then we'll do, do, do the mutations and we'll score it again, we'll rank it. So we'll put in order um, and, um, and yeah, so then that would be the full going from one generation to the next generation. So if you're following, um, you have your initial population um, you then, uh, you score it, right? You then need to select the parents for the next generation. Then, um, uh, you do the crossover. So then you randomly breed. Um, that's the way I've done it at least. Um, I've done random, uh, breeding. Um, but the selection was roulette wheel. Um, but then, you know, you randomly breed within the population, um, or the parents at least. And then, uh, then you do mutations. And so you just run all the members through the mutation function. Every now, you know, 5% of them will get mutated. And then of those 5% that are mutated, 30% should um, have some genetic material added. So um, for the sake of, I might need to up the mutation rate because of the fact that um, there, you know, duplicates might be more common. Um, and uh, that might help with um, better performance. So let's run it. So we go to our Anaconda prompts and we run it. Um, we have it ranked from zero or from, from, from greatest to least essentially. So uh, if we look at our best route at the moment, um, we actually have the, we actually have the best route. Um, out of 10 and we have two of them. So um, we can see that um, we, we are getting some duplicates, which makes sense, but based on a roulette wheel, we should be seeing some duplicates. Um, and uh, we're not seeing any, really any zeros after the first generation. So if we go up to the first generation, right? 
Um, so we have a zero. This obviously um, needs to just be thrown away because it's not gonna. It's gonna mess up the rest of the stuff. Um, so we only check um, at the beginning. We check for the um, original. You know, does the direct route work? Um, and we also also always start with the um, the longest route too. That kind of ensures um, some diversity to to go through. Um, and so in the initial population, we ended up generating the the actual best one. But obviously. That's because our network's small. Um, this is, you know, just for being able to verify things. But we also have, say, for example, this um, this one here. Uh, it's a zero, right? And when we go to the next generation, right, um, we see that it doesn't get selected, right? Um, and so that just shows us that after everything, you know, our scores are getting better just off of one generation, so to speak, um, and. The idea is that hopefully, um, you know, as we do more generations and particularly as the network size grows, right? Because when you go from, say, a seven network node to even a 15 network node, it's going to get a lot, you know, going to be a lot different. You know, it's probably not going to generate, um, it's not going to generate the best one randomly, so to speak. So if we run it, so like if we run it again, right, um, we should find that. It's probably not going to produce um, the see the the best scoring route on this one was um, 1.7 even after um, even after the mutations and the crossovers. So um, if we up this to say 30, right, and we say three, um, my experience is that usually you end up with the um, the best one for this particular network after one generation. Um, but uh, let's see. That's usually how it goes. No, okay. Um, so I would say then that. Well, it actually might have had it in the gut. In the gut, thrown away. Nope. All right. Well. Um, so yeah, basically. Uh, this particular network could probably find the best the actual best route within like 50 generations or maybe at least 100. Um, but the idea is that once we get to the point of having a legit, you know, un, a human, uh, like a human being unable to, you know, verify it, um, that's hopefully where this genetic algorithm will shine. And um, for the for the final presentation, we're going to have a, um, a, tw a 15 or 20 node network that I've um, can kind of still verify and then we're going to have the randomly generated 100, 100 node network and and see uh, that it can do it. So thanks for watching and look forward to sharing the final presentation.